Hey everybody, welcome to 333. Uh, this is a Knicks video series by myself, Jared Emick. I am a comedy writer. I'm also a Knicks lifer. And what I'm going to be doing here is essentially therapy. It's going to be myself uh, just discussing how I feel uh, about this team. Uh, I hold them very dear to my heart, too dear. Uh, it's a very serious thing. I, I always tell people that if I had to choose between getting my own comedy show or uh, the Knicks winning a championship, I, I would just kill myself because I, I can't make a choice like that, and I won't. Uh, instead, I'll do this video series, and uh, we could talk about the team. The name of the show is 333, and uh, it's in honor of Starks and Ewing, uh, two of my childhood heroes. I would hope two of your childhood heroes. Uh, if not, don't watch this. You're not going to like it. Let's get right into the game, shall we? So uh, the Knicks welcoming the Boston Celtics into the garden for uh, the season opener. Obviously, a lot of hype. You know, we just came off a playoff appearance. For real. It was, we didn't dream it. We were in the playoffs. Look, it was a hell of a game. I mean, uh, it was an emotional torture is how I, I've been describing it to people. I felt like I ran 10 miles after it. And, um, you know, it was thrilling to win. I was very excited, but it was almost too much. It was almost too much. I don't want to see a lot of these uh, double overtime games where we're turning the ball over just almost for fun towards the end and uh, really ruining, you know, my night. <laughs> Until, of course, you know, we escaped. But my God, I mean, this is a, you know, it, it, People try to, you know, talk about losses and say, are there any good losses? Sometimes there are bad wins. This almost felt like a bad win, uh, but I'm just a pessimistic asshole. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. Let's uh, let's get into the takeaways from this game. I mean, we got, first of all, first takeaway for me, it's Obi's coming out party. Let's, let's throw up this dunk. This is like sex to me, this dunk. This is, I could just watch this and I would be good. I don't need any sort of other stimulation. This was the best I felt all night. And I think it's because... You have a guy in Obi who you know has the gifts. You know he's got it. When you have a guy like that who can dunk and run the floor and just fucking just have a slam dunk contest during the game, you know, that, that that's not a given for a lot of these guys. I honestly think he could be better than RJ. And whenever I tell that to most level-headed people, they say, oh, you're stupid. I realize now you're an idiot. And I get it. You know, it is a stupid take, but I, I, I believe it. Second takeaway is you must be this tall to ride the Evan Fournier roller coaster all season. It's going to be up and down all season. He lost the game and won the game in the same game you know, with the, with this ridiculous uh, not knowing where he is on defense on that final play where they tied it to get into OT to fired off what seemed like three or four threes in a row. Whew. I'm just happy he's on the squad. And he's also got this Steph Curry kind of movement without the ball that I feel like makes everybody better. They had some play that they ran back during uh, last night. And, you know, they had Randall kind of set a screen up at the top of the key. And he just kind of, you know, put a few moves on. Randall let it develop past Fournier the ball. He goes up and scores. I love Fournier in this offense. I, 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 I'm I super excited about Fournier. Viva la Fournier. Sacre bleu croissant. I'm on board with all of it. Uh, the other takeaway is, you know, they, they, there was, there was some good defense. I mean, everybody, everybody praised RJ's defense. I think they all play good defense. I think in the NBA, you know, the defense is probably a system that's enforced by the coach. And you got a guy like Thibodeau, you're going to do what he says. You're switching when he switches you, you're, you're buying into his system when he's selling it in practice. And I thought, you know, they were all good on defense. I mean, Randall played great defense. Randall had a few huge blocks and then Mitch, of course. I mean, the monster Mitch. Let's let, let that, that that leads me into my next takeaway. Mitch Robinson. It's crazy. You, you look at Mitch out there. He's kind of almost hobbling towards the end of the game. And you start getting worried about his injuries. And you think, man, is he going to last? I'm really worried about Mitch. I look at the box score. The guy's got 17 rebounds. So, you know, if he's out there, it's going to be great. He had a lot of, you know, not blocks, but intimidations where guys would be wide open and then go, shit, Mitch is around the corner. I better run and hide. Never shoot the ball again because I heard Mitch is in town. Those are the things I'm watching. Um, but I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable how happy I am. I don't, you know, as a Knicks fan, when, when you're feeling good, you think, well, something's wrong. I mean, something's around the corner. This is not, this is not right. I mean, I have to, did, did we lose last night? Did I, did I see it wrong? Did I look quickly and think that we won and he lost? Um, you really, <laughs> this is a, it's a new feeling this year. 
So look, we're one and zero. Next game, we're in Orlando. The Fournier revenge match. That's going to be those headlines. I think are going to be taken over ESPN. Fournier returns to Orlando. What will they do? Um, I'm sure he's already done that last year. Nobody cares about this. I'm looking for the Knicks to pull out a, a something like a 12 to 15 point win over the Magic. And look, uh, moving forward, I hope you know we find uh, you know each other here in the comment section. I hope you subscribe to 333. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a long year. Uh, it's going to be a long life if you're an Knicks fan like me. So uh, let's at least kind of connect and you know feel sympathy for each other. And once we lose in the second round, we can kind of you know. Just check in and make sure we're doing okay, and then we'll do it all over again next year. All right, now we got a great segment coming up. It's the Oops All Knicks Draft, where we're drafting only Knicks. Um, it, this was shot right before the season opener, um, and that's it. Enjoy. <music> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are here at the Oops All Knicks Draft, where we're drafting only Knicks. I'm joined by a comedian, wonderful person, an improviser I know from UCB. I love him. Knicks fan, Alex French. Alex, how are you? Jared, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm excited about this season. Um, Alex, you are a guest, so uh, I will let you have the much coveted first pick of the Oops All Knicks draft. You get to choose. Now, some out there might think it's obvious. Some might not, but I'm curious to see who you're going with. Who you got for that first pick? You know what? I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going with Julius Randle. Julius Randle, MIP himself. I love it. Let's put him on the big board here. It has Why, to be. Why, Alex, did you go with Julius Randle? You know, I feel like a lot of us, uh, speaking just from experience, maybe still aren't in love with uh, Randall and maybe don't trust him 100% at the end of the game. Uh, we maybe didn't feel great about his playoff performance, but there's no denying what he did all season long last season. Right. I think he's like a hardworking dude. I think he's going to be as good, if not better this season. I don't really? know that that means. See, it's you know, interesting I don't, you say that because yeah. a lot of people are predicting regression. I, and, think, he, I think he's a hardworking guy. I'm predicting, I think he's going to stay the same. I don't think though that, He'll end up getting like third team All NBA again, but I think he's right. going to be playing. I, I think he was second actually, oh, which is astonishing. Yes. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> that is crazy. But uh, but you think he will be basically? I mean, certainly the highest scorer on the team. Yeah. You feel like he'll bring consistent play throughout. Yeah, I think he's going to still be our most important player. Yeah, I mean, I I I, I tend to agree with you, and I, and if I had the first pick, I you know. I'd go with him as well. The only reason I wouldn't would be just to make a point that um, he he wasn't he didn't really come in during the clutch. He didn't come through in the clutch. Yeah. He, he he had these certain moments in the regular season. At a, you'll you'll probably remember he he had some last second shots. He had a, a ball tipped out of his hands while he was trying to attempt a three and and mm -hmm. then never got it off. He obviously in the playoffs completely collapsed. Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to. I know we brought in some new guys, and we'll get to them soon. But the whole point of these acquisitions seemed to be just to bolster our scoring, which is something that he was supposed to provide. But God, I hope some of these new. I mean, we'll talk about Kemba, but I'm hoping that he's kind of a go-to option when you need the final shot. Me too. Because a lot of times, Randall, and we'll get off Randall in a second. But a lot of times, Randall, you know, insists on taking that fade away. Yes. Or, and, and he's in the post and he's constantly kind of working this oh. finesse game when the dude is enormous. I mean, well, I don't understand. I guess there's no low post play anymore in the NBA. But no. why doesn't he just muscle his way in? I, I, I don't understand yes. why he settles so often. I'm 100% with you. He is right. so strong. There's no reason he shouldn't just be like putting his head down and getting to the rim. Right. I agree. So I got the second pick here and... You know, I don't know if this is the most difficult pick. I'd, probably the next pick is the most difficult pick. But, uh, ooh. you know, I, I, I'm going to have to go with RJ. And a lot of, I, I, I'm going to have to go with RJ. Now, wow. this is this is this is uh, this is a pick that is really kind of centered in hope. You know what I mean? It's it's this is his third year. Uh, it's a make or break year. Of course, he had this disappointing rookie season. I don't really want to hear anybody who, who says it wasn't. I mean, it absolutely was. 
he, he was, I think he admitted it, didn't he? Didn't he admit yeah. that he wanted to be on the rookie all team and he wasn't, and he was upset about it. I don't know if he was upset that he wasn't voted or if he didn't deserve it, but he didn't deserve it. No, he didn't have the numbers. He come in in the second year and look, Randall had a unbelievable once in a lifetime season that kind of lifted him. As we mentioned, he's the workhorse and RJ kind of benefited from that. You know, he was on the playoff team. It was fun to see him in the playoffs, but man, Never really any consistency, never really any shooting consistency, offensive consistency. And I'm a little worried about him. And I'm only worried in the sense that we took him at three overall. And he feels like he feels like one of these, not role player, but but a starter, but a rotation guy. I'm one of these guys. I don't know about you, but I I am of the school of thought that players don't really take that long to develop for the most part. Like there's your Giannis uh-huh. and there's some other guys, but for me, especially with guards, you're lo- big guys, a little different guards. You're looking at them. You could tell within the first, I think few seasons, what you got. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if RJ ever rises above the level of what he did last year. And I'm curious to think what you, what, what your assessment at the moment is of RJ. Cause it's a tough, it's a tough, conversation i mean our emotions are really wrapped up in this guy yeah it's always so hard because i think we just want him to be good so so badly so bad and so, so bad. badly so badly that i know that i'm not seeing it clearly but right. that being said i am expecting him to take like a little bit of a jump this year and like you said i think after that i think the rookie season was disappointing i think he did improve last year. I mean, I think I, I was reading he just turned 21 over the summer. Yes. Yes. He's, still he, he's so certainly young. young. I mean, he's certainly yes. young. There's no doubting that. He's he's got yes. time to grow. And like you're okay. saying, I don't know if he ever rises to like an all-star level. I think he's gonna rise if he if he doesn't get hurt, if he keeps going at this uh pace, I think at some point he'll be like a better rotation player. Or maybe someone like who like Evan but wouldn't Fournier that disappoint you peak. right but wouldn't yes. that wouldn't that be awful it, that's a pretty bad result <laughs> it would it would be disappointing but I think I think I'm like so beaten down in everything yes. that him just not being bad would be okay he seems like a guy who could be great on defense yes but but is it and i i don't i don't know why i get that sense a lot of a lot of this a lot of this analysis is just going to be instincts you know <laughs> with the, you know <laughs> just I saying think... what you what you feel and that, that's that's he that's what, how like, i feel about him yes he feels strong and athletic to me and yes. i think that's why i have that exact same sense that i feel like he should and could be really good on defense and i think it's totally. just based on that and i know it sounds like i'm I'm down. I just picked him first <laughs> and I just spent 10 minutes shitting on him. But I, 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 it's, it's almost, I, I think that, that, that pick is mostly out of this kind of, I don't know, I guess what I was alluding to this obligation, this really emotional attachment that he's got to be good. You know, he's yes. got to be good. And, and yeah. that's why I went with him. Do you know too, um, I, I would say too, I think I love this team right now. I'm like too. very excited by the team that we have. And excited that even our first, uh, that like, it feels like they're getting good together. Like the core unit, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it's really fun. But I think long-term, obviously no one is expecting this current roster, like to do anything big. And so at some point, like we're going to need, yeah. I think, to bring in like a real star. And yes, when that happens, I think like, whether it's like next year or the year after, Not I think RJ going to be like a great like third or fourth player on the team to have alex you are up with the third overall pick of the Knicks draft a lot of interesting players on the board this is a tough one okay have? i'm taking kemba walker wow kemba walker he's mm-hmm. coming home he's coming home tell he's the world back, that kemba is coming home <laughs> let's hear it what, what, what do you what do you think Okay, he may get injured almost immediately. He may not play <laughs> almost at all. <laughs> Fully prepared right. for that. I've but, seen memes about his knees, and yes, that's all you need to know. Yeah. Yes, exactly. 
But I have to say, number one, even if he does get hurt, everything I've heard about him is that he is an incredible teammate and an incredible culture guy. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, I love it. Um, I mean, I think there's already been like a big shift in the last like year in particular with the team, but like bringing in guys like him, I think are, it's just great, I think. And I'm very like excited to have like a good steady veteran Got, presence guys yeah. like him meaning he's a veteran is that is that, is that mostly what you mean veteran and also just i hear that he is like a great teammate just like in general really really yeah yeah i mean you know i i go back to yukon uh you know i went to school at syracuse and mm. and uh, the, he was a fixture in the biggies tournament uh back when that was a thing that mattered yeah. and he uh you know, he's had an interesting NBA career. I mean, you know, he came in on with, with the Bobcats, if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah. you know, that team was barely a team, but he scored, I think I'd have to look it up, but I think around, you know, 20. I mean, like he he, he was a, definitely an offensive presence. Um, was a bit, I don't know if I would say disaster in Boston, but I know he, he there was some sort of something happened there, right? There was a disappointment. I mean, it wasn't yes. on the level of Kyrie, but he was supposed to be the guy there and then sort of wasn't. Um, I'm really happy to have him. I agree with you. It's, it's, you know, he doesn't seem like he's a D focused guy. No, but as I think I had mentioned before, we need offense desperately. So, yeah. so that's, that's my thing with him. It, as long as he could score. Great. I'm happy. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm nervous about you. Do you, I mean, do you, how many games do you see him playing? Oh, <laughs> this, is, no, this is like the RJ question. This is like, Yes. I, I can't. This is tough. Like, this is, we're I mean, talking about real shit here. I would like to see him play. Give me like 62 games. Okay. I'm going to let okay. him miss like a fourth of the season. I, I'm going to be you. happy. That, that, I mean, that, I'd be thrilled with, with yeah. what you just said. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, but okay. Let's, these are, <laughs> and also <laughs> every pick is like, ooh. I know. All right. I say, let's not forget too. I feel like last season we were hating every time Alfred Payton was in the game. Yes. So I'm also just excited. It's like, you know what? He's me too. I me think too. even if he doesn't play much, even if he's not anywhere near the Kemba he was, I think mm -hmm. he still is going to just be an upgrade at point guard. I agree with you. I mean, no, he'll, he's definitely an upgrade. And, uh, I'm excited. I, I hope he's fueled by some sort of hometown. I mean, I get the sense that the yes. hometown stuff is is mostly marketing, but maybe I'm just being cynical about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> like it's yeah, yeah, like he grew up here and he's here and he's happy. But what does that really influence people on the court? I'd like to see some sort of, you know, I don't know, infographic or something. <laughs> exactly. Some sort of Gladwell analysis of like people yeah. who come home and if they play better. Let's move on with the Oops All Things draft. We're on pick overall number four. Man, oh man, um, it's tough, but I might be making a big mistake, but I'm going to go with Mitchell the Ooh. Beef Robinson. Speaking of injuries. Speaking of injuries. Now look, guys, I get it. He, he, is, he is a risk. He's a big guy. He's got foot problems and his career might be over before it started, but God damn the way he looked at the end of last year was special. I think in the game that he got hurt and got taken out and then didn't come back since that game in, in you know, last season, I believe he had 10 rebounds and 10 points at halftime. Oh. And, <laughs> you know, I, I, Alex, I know you didn't see uh, preseason. I, I, I skipped most of it as well. Not a big preseason guy. But the, but the final game, you know, that was the only game that Mitch played was this most recent one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he came in and, and gave you exactly what you wanted. He, you know, a couple of dumb fouls, a couple of all over the place, but made like four plays inside that were like Shaq-esque. I'm sorry. The guy's grabbing the ball and just slamming it over people and screaming. And you're thinking like this guy on at any given day could be the best player on the team. Oh. He, he, I mean, he could really, I think, be the best player on the team this season. What I mean, what is your outlook on Mitch? I mean, are you as high on him as I am? Yes, very high on him. Okay. But I think I just, I got to like see it to believe it in terms of him staying on the court. Okay. 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 But as long as, I mean, he's, he's cut the fouls. He's, 
He's he's put on weight. He's he's done. I mean, everything you could really ask for, other than be on the court, I guess, which is probably yeah. a, a key component <laughs> yes. to being a good basketball player. But I, I hear you. You you just afraid because he's big, or just because he's had multiple injuries, or it's just yeah. it just feels like it's yeah. been nonstop. And I feel like right. I I think I have such a negative outlook for like injury plagued players like that. Um, Alex, let's keep it going. We we got the fifth pick uh, up overall. I sent you 15 guys. We got 11 more to go. Who you got? Okay, you mentioned a praying for Mitch. Well, you're not the only one who's to be praying. My third pick will also be praying because I'm taking good Christian man, Emmanuel, quickly. Wow, IQ himself. I love it. That is a good pick. A good pick. Um, Tell us why you picked him. I got to say... I don't even think he'll be the most important guard of the guards who are left. Um, I don't even know that he'll be shouldering the load or the biggest load, bringing the most to the team, but Mm -hmm. he's by far the guard who I'm most excited about. Yeah, I would have to agree. Right. I mean, how could you, how could you not be excited about him? Um, So many aspects to his game, the runner right in the lane, the three ball. I mean, the guy, a great kind of spirit to him. I feel like too. Yes. You know what I mean? He's, 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 he's with, you know, he came in with Obi and I'm so glad he did because they seem to share this kind of, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, just, just, just love for the game. They constantly yes. have a smile on their face. They're yes. bouncing up and down the court all the time. And, you know, you can maybe say that about the whole squad, but God, you feel it when he's out there. You feel like he's in it and he loves it. And and that's almost half the battle, I feel like, with some of these young guards. They yes. can get an attitude and screw up their whole career. But man, from the jump, I lo- I've loved his personality. Oh my God, me too, 100%. I feel like in that like <laughs> first playoff game last year, he was like prancing yes. down the court. <laughs> how do you not love him? He's great. I I don't know how he's not the most. I, I mean, I went to that... Uh, I guess it was game two, one of the games of the Hawks series yeah. in the garden. And, uh, and I'm thinking, look, I'm buying a Jersey. You know, I don't, I don't do it that much. I'm an adult. I, I try to not <laughs> own too many jerseys. Right. But I figure, look, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping them. It's the playoffs. I got to go hard. And it wasn't even a contest to me. You Whoa. know, I walked to the store. I said, where are the quickly jerseys, sir? I need to purchase an IQ Jersey now. And he said, right this way. I tried it on. It looked great. I feel great. Wow. You know, my buddy got a Randall jersey. Oh. And it was just like, oh, look, I get it, man. But think outside the box. Think, who do you, re- you know, who do you actually really love the most? Is it really yes. Randall? And, you know, he gave me some nonsense. How he's, you know, the go-to guy and all that. But my favorite Nick right now, I think, is Emmanuel Quickly or Mitch. It, it goes back and forth. Um, Alex... Will you accept this pick? It's Derek Rose. Whoa. Will you accept this Derek Rose? I, 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 had, I had that bachelor idea. It did really get out right, but you know what I was going for. <laughs> yeah. Derek Rose <laughs> is my pick. A sixth pick appropriately because I believe he could easily win the sixth man yes. of the year award this season. Look, what can you say? That hasn't already been said about Derrick Rose, but I'll try. The guy is a <laughs> spark plug. I mean, capital S spark plug. And he's so respected by the rest of the league. Yes. It, it's almost it's almost laughable. Guys like on the other team will like, you know, help him up and say, you know, after games, everyone goes over to him and hugs him. I think it's a combination of, of sympathy and knowing what he could have been after he had that knee injury, after he won MVP in his rookie year. For but man, sure. I don't know. I don't know the last time you've seen rose rookie year highlights uh you know that season oh my oh, god his athleticism was able to is do. incredible 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 and he really kind of still has it i think not yes. not, not the, you know leaping yeah. ability right yeah. but like but as far he'll have he had a couple of reverse kind of windmill layups you know oh. last season he can really make some unbelievable plays i i, I really yeah. love him i think he is you know, certainly in my crunch time lineup, I think. I mean, yes. all was all last season, has to be all this season. And at any given moment, he's the best player on the team. <laughs> I know I'm saying yes. that about a lot of guys, but God, we have fallen back on him a lot. And I just love him. 
he's an intense, no nonsense, incredible veteran presence on the team. I think he's fantastic. Tell me about Derek Rose. How do you feel about him? Oh, man, absolutely. I'm with you 100%. And I feel like in that playoff series against the Hawks, like one to two games in, once Randall started crapping out, I feel like he did become the best, most important player on our team. I think it goes back to that thing, too, that I think we both agree on about just not trusting Julius Randle. Right, right. I know that, like, Derrick Rose, I don't expect him to deliver every single time, but I definitely, like, feel more at ease when the ball is in his hands. A hundred percent. Pick seven overall. It goes to you, Alex. It's getting interesting. Who you got? Wow. Okay. Um... Gosh, I'm going with another just excitement pick right now. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm going with Mr. Obehave himself, Obi oh. Toppin. I love this pick. Go ahead. Tell, tell, tell me why. Okay. I feel like we barely got to see him last year. I mean, it was just flashes here and there. Yeah. But I think in the playoffs, even just getting like a couple, like little tastes of his, uh, like dunking his highlight ability. And the mm-hmm. way that MSG went nuts, I'm just so excited for the potential of that happening on a regular basis this year. I'll maintain uh, that Mike Breen call during the playoffs. Uh, I believe it was after an OB uh, alley oop to kind yes. of tie a game. And he said, It's Bedlam here in the garden. It's <laughs> Bedlam. And the, it was it was probably the loudest I think the garden has gotten in in many many years. I mean, I I I have a hot take that I've 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 told some people. They laughed in my face, and I'll tell it to you. And I want to see what you think. Here we go. To me, Obi Toppin will end up the better player between him and R.J. Barrett. He will what? have a better career. That's my take. Now That's- I know it's I know it's hot. It's hot, so it's hard to handle. I can see you processing. Very hot. <laughs> Here's my thought. RJ almost seems to be developing in slow motion, right? Mm-hmm. He's got the skills, and he's got the body, and he's a great, great, great player. OB, man, that jump from the regular season to the playoffs to even what I saw in the, in the very limited uh, time that I watched the preseason of this year, First of all, he seems like a definite second. You know, last season he had what six or seven, you know, you know minutes. He, he didn't have a lot of minutes. Yeah. Um, this season, I expect him to play key, key minutes, and probably sometimes in crunch time, he will be an important yes. player in the rotation this year. As I hope so. Last year, and man, you can't teach you know hops, right? Mm-hmm. He's got it, and in the same way as Mitch, you know, when you can just run down there and dunk the ball. And you are somewhat of a presence on defense, which again, you know, I'm not sure he is, but a lot of guys aren't. Yeah. His physical gifts, I feel like, can really be nurtured and molded into something really special. Whereas RJ, you kind of, you got what you got, I think. Oh, um, interesting. I know it's, 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 a, it's, a, everyone would hate me. Uh, uh, Knicks fans, <laughs> I could I feel seething right now. Um But I just think he's underrated. And I think this, uh, you know, his little like Geronimo circus three point shot that he tries every once in a while, (laughs) that can be legit. And as long as you're a threat and you can make that shot, which I honestly think he can, you know, if if you're wide open and you make that, you know, almost half the time. Yeah, that's it. That's huge to have. Like, I mean, it used to be such a bigger deal when you guys had like Kevin Love was the only big player in the league who could shoot threes. You know, now it's a little bit every big player in the league shoots threes. But I not mean, guys who can run and dunk like that, too. No, I don't know if I'm... I mean, he can definitely shoot the ball. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. He can... He, he, he has can, an offensive yeah. game. I think he just had a little bit of that, um, you know... I guess... I don't want to say he was was afraid or anything, but he had a little bit of that Frank... And this is the only time I'll bring up Frank. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he had a little bit of that frankness where he was like, look, I don't want to score. I don't want to hog the ball. Yes. I want to focus on being part of the offense. Often last year, you'd see him like decidedly, you know, setting picks and being really excited about it. Right. (laughs) And he did that a lot. He'd go down the court and just set picks and he'd get the ball. And you'd have, you know, those moments where Frazier's calling the game going like, look at the rim, look at the basket, shoot, you're right there. (laughs) 
And I really think that he'll take it to the next. I think he'll shake that off. I think a lot of that is nerves. He clearly was a little nervous in his rookie year. And I just think he's got, he's got it. Um, Also, I do think that RJ will end up being the better player, but I I mean, I, I, most level-headed people, that's what they believe. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to convince you. It's just something, again, one of those kind of gut, you know, reactions. But I like the idea that they both will be good. Alex, I, all I could say is Sacre Blue. I'm going with Evan Fournier. Wow. I'm going with Evan Fournier. Um, okay. Look, I, 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 this guy is, is a bit of an enigma to me. You know, he's, uh, he was really impressive uh, in the FIBA tournament uh, recently. Mm-hmm. Was it FIBA? No, it might have been the, the Olympics. The oh, yeah, yeah, Olympics. yeah. Yeah. And they played uh, us in the gold medal game, as I recall. Yes. And I was telling my friends, um, you know, make no mistake, I'm cheering for France. Because as I told them, it's it's Knicks first, USA second. And that's that's still how I feel. Oh, <laughs> I've never felt proud about the the USA winning a gold has never right, been lower than second. Right, good right. in my normal <laughs> life. Yeah, exactly. From his NBA career, I feel like I expect him to have some moments, but I think I'm lower on him maybe than other people. Okay. And, and why do you think that is? I think I just feel like it's another one of those things that I feel like just um, from the accumulation of everything I've seen from him, I've seen some like promise, but I just overall have a, a sense of darkness when I think of him. <laughs> and so... A sense you know, of darkness? Oh, That's interesting. I, just, I don't trust. There's something about him that I'm like, you know, I don't... I'm not expecting much, but maybe that'll... That'll be a good thing. Um, pick nine, uh, Alex. Man, I don't envy you. It's a tough spot. Who you got? You know, I know I need size on my uh, fictional roster right now, but <laughs> right, right. I have to make a pick. I think just out of pure respect for Alex Burks. Alex um, Burks, yes. And Let's I th- hear why. I think it is just because he. I really felt like he came through in a few big playoff moments last year. And that's maybe a recurring theme with my picks is basing a lot on that one series, but you know what? It's, it's nice. I feel like we fell apart in the playoffs. I like having someone who I feel like, you know what, when we needed buckets, he was scoring. Yeah. He can generate offense kind of by himself. And that's, enormous yeah i could see him starting stronger and getting phased out as the season goes on yeah right i could see that but uh look i mean i hope for the best for the guy but i i i (laughs) (laughs) we're talking about him like he's dying that's how i feel it is life and death you know alex it, it is i mean it's it's this stuff is this feels like people are dying to me um this is the 10th pick of the draft um, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Um, man, every, every, once you get past really one, <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough draft. I'm sorry. This is, oh, this yeah. is, this is, this is, uh, Sophie's choice, you know, like 10 times in a row. It's wild. <laughs> um, but you know what? I, I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go with my boy Nerlens. Oh, I'm going okay. with Nerlens Noel. And, uh, him. He is a, yeah, he is, you know, when Mitch went down last season, it was almost like a, wow, well, well, we're done. Why even try? He mm-hmm. filled in and this almost, I guess, maybe says more about Mitch than Nerlens, but, but, but he, he basically, there was no drop off. I mean, the defense yes. was wild. Did, what, what do you think of Nerlens? What do you think he's, he's bringing this here? I'm with you. I think he's a great defensive presence. He's a great backup for Mitch and, um, also, I mean, he's going to give you, I think, the uh, OB inverse, where like every once in a while, you're going to get a block that's going to make people stand up. Yes, he has. He's a highlight play guy. Yeah. Like, I know you don't think it's like the you, you're, you're you would think, OK, well, who are our highlight guys? Exactly. Like OB, you know, IQ, yes. long threes. He probably defensively had the most game changing plays. I would have I think to say. so. With pick 11 overall in the Oops All Knicks draft, Alex, you're up. All right. I need to get a little size on my team. So I'm taking Brooklyn's own Taj Gibson. Wow. 
going with Taj. Let's talk about him. How do you feel about Taj Gibson? He's old, but he's yeah. a great guy to have as like your backup, your third center. I agree. I mean, look, I, I think he he gets, you know, Tibbs loves him. So he's going to yes. be out there. And I think he's, again, one of these guys similar to Nerland's where his impact is, is immeasurable. And he, yeah. he's, he's, you know, very much like Rose. And I know it's fun to talk about, you know, they were on the same team and they were with the Bulls and they were with Tibbs and there's that core and everybody loves that. But God, I, I think it's even more than that. I think independent of everything, he is a leader. He yeah. is just like, an, just a, he, you could tell that he's, he has such a presence on the court. Uh, he makes big plays. I mean, a lot of guys rag on him and think, you know, he can't shoot or whatever and he's useless and he's old. He makes <laughs> plays. <laughs> I know. My, 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 he's my, useless, my, he's <laughs> old, he smells. A lot of <laughs> And, yeah. you know, you mentioned this um, earlier about Mitch in the preseason. Yeah. And I think Taj brings emotion to the floor, yes. too. I think there are yes. so many moments where whatever it is, he, like, slams it home. He gets a block, and he just, like, lets out a scream. And I love Great having screamer. that. Yes. He is a screamer. Absolutely. Um, I feel pretty good about this one. Okay. I'm, going with, uh, I'm going with the Rook. I'm going with Grimey. Okay. I'm going with Quentin Grimes. He went. He played for Houston, and uh, and he again, I believe, he went to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. So this is not, you know, trying to find a guy or, or see, you know, I think Obi, you know, yeah, he was yeah, the College Player of the Year, but it's not like Dayton had a big run in the tournament. Uh, yeah. This guy, you know, everybody talks about can you play in New York? If you're playing in the Final Four, like I'm sorry, <laughs> more people are watching that. <laughs> <laughs> than us so to me it's it's he he's ready i watched him a little bit in the preseason um he can shoot he can shoot i also read uh his his coach at houston uh samson who's kind of one of these like you know legendary coaches mm -hmm. was known for his intense practices oh, like he it. would grind <laughs> love it right isn't this just music to your ears he'd grind <laughs> them down and grimes you know embraced it and loved it and it's like who could be more perfect? You have this battle tested guy, really impressed on the big stage in college, had a tough coach, plays defense, big three and D guy. I'm just excited. I love everything that you're saying about this guy. I, I know very <laughs> little myself, but I have to right. say Fair. everything feels like he's just fitting in with like the reason I love the team right now which yeah. is just like such this hard work, middle-class mentality. I'm all in on the front office. I'm, I'm a huge, you know, worldwide West Leon. I, I'm, I, I love what they're doing. I, I, I never thought I'd say it. But it only it. took one season. Yeah. And I think it, 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 all it took truly was getting quickly me being like, who's that? And then loving him to be like, all right, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's see. We don't have too many guys remaining here. No. Um, I see a rookie, I see a bust, and uh, <laughs> I, see, I see two guys uh, who I don't really know too well. So who are you yes. going with? Yeah, I am officially in my, like, can tell you almost nothing about these guys, <laughs> right? That's fine. We're keeping um, it real here. You know, we don't want to pretend like we know more than we no. do, but go for it. You know what? I'm going to take somebody who I actually don't think was on the list that you sent me, but... I think he is officially wow. on, on the roster, Okay, uh, go for which it. is Jericho Sims. Do you know what? It is purely based on one summer league highlight I saw <laughs> of him dunking the ball. And that is it. But it was so electrifying. But the gist is he jumped so high. It's sort of exactly <laughs> what you were talking about. With Kobe, like head above right. the rim. He's like 6'10". Yes, and like, right. He's a raw he's, talent. Yes. He seems like from what I've heard that he is very raw but just mm -hmm. one moment like that is just at this point you know putting together these rosters i'm just going for excitement so look so you draft the jericho sims there's two players left on the board uh and i i know who i'm going with it's mm -hmm. wayne selden jr Ooh. Okay. now apparently they're looking to cut this guy <laughs> yes. and he won't even be on the roster it's more of a statement about the guy who you're going to be forced into taking right after this <laughs> All right, I guess I'll be taking um, this year's Frank, Kevin <laughs> Knox. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, 
I, I am somewhat known around my, my, my friends and family as a, as a Frank Nidalekina hater. Please don't press the stop button. Don't hit the dislike. Don't leave a hated comment. I understand everybody loved Frank. I didn't. But I wrote him hard and I felt he deserved it. Knox now, you're right. He is looking like the goat and not the good kind of goat. Oh, no. The bad kind. Why, why, why don't you run down what you have to say about Kevin Knox? Do you know what? At this point, I just, I'm, I feel like he's a bust. I feel like he's done. He's bust. He's and bust. this is just the sad stage where he's going to be on the team for at least another year. He's going to get thrown in a couple moments. And every time it's just going to make us sad that right. he didn't pan out. Yeah. You know, it's like this whole story where he asked the coaches to be put on the summer league roster. And man, I mean, what a kind of sad thing to be, you know, proud of a guy for, right? I mean, <laughs> everybody I think was kind of, you know, giving him some kudos and like, wow, you know, yeah. that's really big of him. You know, he is, that's humble of Knox. And to me, it's like, well, it's easy to be humble when you suck. Yeah. He, he he's, he's just, air on defense you could run right through him and you know for a guy who's known to make threes he made very few threes yeah and i you know to me he's the inverted frank whereas you know frank was known quote yes. unquote for his defense and could play of offense. All-star. that's yes. right knox is known quote unquote for his three-point shooting and he can't play defense and the truth is neither of them can really play either side um mm. It's more now just this scarlet letter to me. Yeah. I mean, he's on the bench and it's almost like, oh, remember when we screwed up? <laughs> I know. It just makes it sadder too that he's just not even like in the rotation. It'd be one thing if he right. just right. didn't turn out to be like what you expect from a top 10 pick. But it's just so sad that he just is so bad that he's just not even playing ever. Right. And, and I mean, he seems like a good teammate. He seems like he's always up on the bench. But right. honestly, it, it's just sad. And I, it is sad. And I don't know how much of a prediction this is, but I'm willing to say that even when compared with other rookies here, Grimes, McBride, and then if you throw in Obi and Quick, just to kind of mm. throw in the players who we've drafted recently, I don't think there's any chance that any of them will be as much of a bust as Knox. And maybe that goes without saying, but I think it's good to keep in mind and a positive spin on Knox is let's accept him as a bust Mm -hmm. and realize that he's probably the worst pick we'll have of last draft, the draft before that and the draft before that. As long as you know what the bottom is, you know, it's like hitting rock bottom, you know, if you're, you know, have a drug addiction or something, right? It's like, <laughs> that is <laughs> it's a, I want to keep it light, right? You, uh, it's only up from here. You, you accept yes. it. You know, I am a Knicks fan and we drafted Kevin Knox and everyone says, hi, Jared. And I tell my story about Knox and then I move on, you know, I move on and I feel better about myself knowing that. We all know he's a failure. I, there's lots yes. of fights with Knicks fans, but I don't think you'll find one oh. in the pro Knox camp. Certainly not now. No, I, I think you're right. People, there were a lot of Frank fans. I think a lot of people who were hanging on to him as like a potential defensive bulldog. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think Knox has any supporters <laughs> who like really believe in him. That's right. And in oh. that sense, you sort of feel bad for him. Um, yeah. God, look, I hope he, he, he watches this for motivation and, and proves us all wrong. But, I want uh, him to be good. And, of you course. Know, of course. I, I want them all to be good. Yes, of course. That's true. <laughs> but, you know, I know that it's not his fault. My memory is that he was like a late riser in the draft. He wasn't originally going to go as high as he did, but... I think that's true. I think that's true. He was a little bit, uh, you know, cursed by, his, by how high he went. Yes. Right. All right. Well, look, that completes the Oops All Next draft. Let's run down the squads. So we got Team Alex versus Team Jared. Team Alex, uh, Julius Randle, Kemba Walker, IQ, Obi, Alec Burks, Taj Gibson, Jericho Sims, and Kevin Knox. That's so a I guess team. I, 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 what's that? That's a team. That that is a team. So let's let's take a look at my yeah. squad. Um, we got RJ, Mitch, D Rose. Fournier, Nerlens, 
Grimes, and Wayne Selden Jr. Now, also, now, I think, too, you get, we didn't talk about him, but I think you get Miles McBride, too. Oh, that's right. Did we As not pick final. Miles McBride? No, I think he got left off. Oh, no, we missed him. His purpose is to go in there and disrupt on defense. I think he's like a defense first combo guard. And he seems like the kind of, he has a great college pedigree too. He played at West Virginia. Um, it seems like he's kind of a guy who, to your point, low expectations, situational kind of guy. And if you're Tibbs and you need D, I think what's not to like. So I'm excited about him. Yeah, he's great. And we forgot um, he existed, but you know, other <laughs> than that, great, I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Well, look, Alex, this was a lot of fun. Um, the Oops All Mixed Draft has come to a close. I think we've learned a lot. I'm very, very, very excited about this upcoming season, as, as I think is pretty clear to anyone watching. Um, any kind of final thoughts, predictions, hot takes coming into this year? It's, it's going to be an interesting one. You know, I think last year was um, a full-on playing with house money year. Mm -hmm. I still feel like that a bit this year. I think as long as we're in the playoffs... I'll feel happy. Like things are on track. Even if we lose in, in the first round again, I agree. I, I'm completely. still going to feel, yeah, we, it's where I think we should be. I think as long as we don't get caught in the play in round, I'll be yes. happy. Yeah. Um, that's it. Alex, do uh, you have anything to plug? Any other final thoughts? Gosh, nothing to plug. Uh, watch the Knicks. Uh, watch the Knicks. Come <laughs> yeah, on. come on, guys. What else are you doing? Watch the Knicks. Yeah, I hope you watch the Knicks. Uh, all right. Um, See you guys great. later. Jared, thanks for having me. So long, everybody.